history books to page 17, class. Today's topic is the great Roman leader, Julius Caesar. Caesar, who ruled Rome around 50 BC, was a general in the Roman legions. For 10 years before coming to power at the ripe old age of 30, Caesar conquered Rome's most dangerous enemies. Conquer Earth. You are powerless against us. Today, Caesar is considered the father of the Roman Empire. Oh, yeah! Since you have such a strong opinion, Mona, perhaps you'd like to tell us what you know about Julius Caesar. Um, didn't they name a month after him? Well, that's right, Mona. July. And you'll all have a chance to learn more at a special historical presentation this weekend. The Great Waldo presents History on Ice, a historical ice show extravaganza. These brochures will grant each of you free admission. In return, you will all be required to submit a report on one of the historical <laughs> figures featured in the show. Julius Caesar, Marie Antoinette, Buffalo Bill, the great Waldo and his wonderful time machine will bring some of the greatest figures in world history right into your own backyard. Oh, ow, ow! Watch where you're going, mister! You okay, Charlie? <laughs> oh, pardon me. Have you seen a gentleman in a toga pass by? Oh, thank you kindly. Julius, come back! Julius? Hey, that must have been the great Waldo. He looks just like this picture. And that toga guy must have been Julius Caesar. He was in an awful hurry. Guess they didn't have any manners in ancient Rome. I'm gonna put that in my report. Oh yeah, the report. Do you guys want to meet at the library tomorrow? Good idea. I wonder if they have a section on time travel. The do-it-yourselfers time machine from your garage to ancient Greece in five easy steps. <laughs> How amusing. No, 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 that would never work. Do you know something about time travel? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. My name is Albert Einstein. I'm sure you've heard of me. Well, in my day, I was a pretty famous scientist. I uncovered the secrets of time and space. Neat! I'm Mona, and these are my friends Charlie and Lily. Do you know anything about the Great Waldo's time machine? The Great Waldo is nothing but a scoundrel. He stole all of my best ideas and used them to... Al! Al, I've been looking for you everywhere. You're late for rehearsal. Oh, please, couldn't I stay a bit longer? I miss my books. You and your books. You need to practice your double axle. Come on. What goes up must come down. What goes up must come down. <laughs> Poor Al. Sure didn't like Waldo much. He seemed to be afraid of him. That stuff he said is right here in this book. That Al guy thinks he's Albert Einstein, one of the greatest scientists of the 20th century. What if he is? Let's go find out. This Waldo and his time machine are gonna need a little investigation. <laughs> about figure skating, but they don't look very good. They're terrible. It's all starting to make sense. They're terrible because they're not figure skaters. They're real historical figures. And the diabolical Waldo has somehow traveled into the past and stolen them from their real time periods. Now they're forced to skate in his show. That was terrible! 
terrible. Al, what am I gonna do with you? You are such a klutz. A klutz? But, but, but these working conditions are terrible. You, you make us work non-stop. You don't respect us, and we never get to have any fun. We miss our homes, and we need a break. And Julius's skates are too tight. I don't have time for this. I have a show to put on. And I still have to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Round up the opening act. We've got to rescue those great men and women of history. And return them to their own time periods. Shh, he's back. Come on, get a move on. Oh, no, I forgot Shakespeare. Go ahead without me. If we could just find Waldo's time machine, we could take everybody back. What was it Einstein said? What goes up must come down. Here he comes again. What goes up must come down. That's it, the elevator. I bet he rewired the elevator into a time machine. Come on! All I need is a one smile from you, Lisa. Lisa, please, one smile. I'm gonna give you top feeling! Thanks! Now we just gotta sneak everybody away from Waldo and... Out, out, out! This area is off limits to nosy children. He may have stopped us this time, but he's no match for Mona the Vampire. Tonight will be Great Waldo's last show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to your epic the first ever caveman on skates, the Iceman Cometh. <laughs> While our performers prepare for Act Two, I'd be happy to answer questions from the audience. Come on, now's our chance. Dad, I gotta go to the little vampire's room. Okay, sweetie, but don't be gone long. You don't want to miss Shakespeare's to skate or not to skate. Ladies and gentlemen, lend me your eyes. Look now upon the amazing Renoir brothers and accompanying them on the high wire. Sorry, little girl, we can't sign autographs right now. Come back later, okay? No, listen. <clears throat> listen, friends. Romans, cavemen, I am Mona the Vampire, and I have come to rescue you from your servitude to Waldo. Uh -huh. Mona? Who is this Mona? Is Mona? Come on, you don't have to be treated this way. It's time to stand up for yourselves. The little girl's right. It's time to walk. Going down in history. Looks like we overshot the caveman age and landed in the Jurassic period by mistake. Thank you, Mona. It will be a thrill to see how my theories are being exploited in the 25th century. Mission accomplished. I can't find any of my performers, and I have a feeling you middling kids have something to do with that. They're not performers. They're great historic figures, and we returned them to where they belong. Well, I'm going to return you to the beginning of time. Are not. And so. Are not. And so. Oh, no, 
not here anywhere but here. Mother will be so mad. I'm a century past my curfew. Waldo, is that you? Your supper is getting cold. Come here this instant. Uh, coming, Mother. There you kids are. I was beginning to worry. I've got bad news. They've canceled the rest of the show due to technical difficulties. And I was really looking forward to that Shakespeare number. Told my dad that Waldo guy left town without paying his bill. Settle down, class. It's not nice to gossip. Open your books to page 73, where you'll find a portrait painted by the great Leonardo da Vinci. Does anyone know the name of its subject? The Mona Lisa. Sorry, Mona, I don't have time to make you breakfast this morning. Doing fine, Mom. Honey, we're going to be late for our exercise class. Ready. Dad, you're still wearing your pajama bottoms. Back in a flash. We'll be back this afternoon, sweetie. Are you going out? Yep, Charlie and Lily and I joined the Town Beautiful Drive. We're polishing the park memorial this afternoon. Got my pants, let's go. Uh, bye, sweetheart. What's the point of telling time if you never have enough of it? Not only does it tell time, but it has a cool alarm. Oh, look. What is it? Wow, oh, pretty. Hey, you there. Give me back my watch. We found it in the grass. Uh, it's a very delicate watch. You can only break it. Don't mind Mr. Kroner. He's a bit of an old-fashioned artisan, but he's a godsend. What does that mean? It means that the Newtown clock stopped working last night, and Mr. Kroner just happened to come by and offered to fix it for free. Well, that was lucky. Oh, my. I'm going to be late for the town council meeting. I really appreciate your help, children. Everybody's always late. This is a lot harder than polishing my mom's silverware. Let's break for lunch. What do all these lines mean? It's a sundial. You can tell time by the pointer shadow. X in two bars means 10 plus two, 12. It must be about noon then. Is that the town clock? Since when does it have a bell? Maybe Mr. Croner added it. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Only 11 strikes at noon. I guess it still needs adjustments. Snuck! My grape soda's gone flat. It was fine when I opened it. My hat, where's my hat? <gasps> my wallet! Oh. Where's my cane? Someone took my lunchbox! You probably left it at home. No way, I had Yahoo cakes. I never forget those. Charlie, are sundials accurate? Unless you knock them out of whack. Well, something's out of whack. This says it's now one o'clock. It was the weirdest thing, an eerie blue light. I saw it too. It looked like that. It's the staircase to the clock. Hello? Who let you kids in here? <gasps> We were just looking for... You are snooping is what? Don't let me catch you here again. He was eating a Yahoo cake, just like mine. Something's not right here. Wow, 
$50 if you can guess the exact number of jelly beans in the jar. I know a kid who has a system. He figures out the volume of one bean and the volume of the jar, and... Noon already? How come it only rings at noon? Maybe it still needs adjustments. It's the same blue light we saw yesterday. Eleven strikes. Just like yesterday. How can ice cream melt so fast? Well, at least nothing's gone missing this time. My jelly beans! Help, police! Who walks off with that many jelly beans? And so quickly. Someone who's a little careless. Looks like Mr. Corner's got a sweet tooth. We lost another hour again. Hmm. Strange things have happened at this exact time two days in a row. But tomorrow, we'll be ready. Alpha to Omega, Alpha to Omega. Anything to report? Over. Am I supposed to be Omega? You have to end each transmission with over. Over. Oh, right. Nothing yet. Over, over. No, just one over. Roger that. Roger? This is Charlie, Mona. Over, over. We've been here almost an hour. I don't think anyone's gonna show. Maybe we were wrong. But I don't understand. My vampire senses have never let me down before. Truck, your way. Over, over. Repeat that, Omega. Over. I said Mr. Corner is coming this way. At least I think it's him. What do you mean? Is that his son? I don't know. Let's follow him. My lunchbox! I knew it! Time to get to work. strikes to them. They didn't hear the last one. Everybody's frozen. Are they asleep? Not asleep. Ah! Just suspended in time. Where did you come from? Where's Mr. Kroner? I'm Mr. Kroner. You are? Suspending time isn't cheap, children. I have to pay with several years of my own to fuel the time machine whenever I use it. You stopped time twice before just so you could steal my lunch in a lousy jar of jelly beans? Oh, no. Those were just practice runs. But today is the real thing. Today, I take the armored truck that comes to the city bank every day at noon. And no one can stop me. I better put this where you can't get at it. Hey, don't you need that key to start time again? Huh. Consider yourselves lucky. Sneaking in here when you did made you immune to the effect of my time machine. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the rest of this town. When the timer runs out in an hour, your town will remain forever suspended. And I'll be long gone. Well, at least we solved the mystery of the flat soda, the sundial, and the melted ice cream. We were frozen like the others for an entire hour. But we're not now. We have to do something. Time is running out. Why, thank you. You're too kind. I hope at 
there's a full tank of gas, fellas. I'm going on a long trip. Rats! My feet don't reach the pedals. We're almost out of time, Mona. I think I figured out how to jam it, but I need something small. <laughs> Steal the money one bag at a time. It's not like I'm pressed for time. <laughs> no! I'm getting younger! Look outside! for a watch I found in a cereal box. And then Officer Howcroft said that Mr. Croner's business was only a front for a father and son team of pickpockets. And that they probably took off when the armored car heist went wrong. Yeah, sure. Well, he was no clocksmith, that's for sure. The repairman they called in to fix the town clock said he made a real mess of things. Mr. Croner must be long gone by now. Do you think we'll ever hear from him again? I don't know. Who knows how breaking the time machine affected him? Oh, you poor thing. Lost your mommy, have you? Let's go see Officer Halcroft. He'll know what to do with you. Oh. 